ever get that feeling? You know that feeling where you're like thinking more about how to think uh-huh. yeah. than actually, you know, yeah. thinking. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we're dealing with today in a good way, I promise. Okay. It's uh, today's deep dive is all about this thing called computational thinking. All right. But before you tune out, thinking it's all algorithms of ones and zeros. Right, yeah. Promise me, it's way more interesting than it sounds. Okay. And to prove it, we're taking inspiration from, get this, a Malaysian textbook. Okay. With a unique twist. That's right. And this textbook, it's not your typical dry read. They've used everyday Malaysian life to explain these concepts. We're talking recipes, uh, even construction, things everyone can relate to. See, I told you, I love that. It's like yeah. sneaking in a mental workout at like uh, a street food market or something. Exactly. So we're talking like less about the techie side and more about just like thinking well. Exactly. We're going to be focusing on the elegance of approaching problems in a structured way, just like a computer, but you know, without all the screens and complexity. Music to my ears. Mm. Okay, so how does this Malaysian textbook, how does it dive into all of this? Well, they start with something quite familiar, and I'm sure you're familiar with this. A recipe for popia basa. Okay, those delicious fresh spring rolls. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already hungry. Right. But I'm guessing there's more to this than just like rolling up some snacks. You got it. Just by following that recipe, breaking it down into the steps, like prepping your fillings, choosing your wrappers, even, you know, mixing the dipping sauce you're already without realizing it, engaging in the first principle of computational thinking decomposition. Decomposition. Okay, so is that just a fancy way of saying like breaking things down? It is. And honestly, that's the beauty of it. It seems obvious, right? We kind of do it instinctively, but being conscious of decomposition as like an actual technique, it can totally change how we approach any challenge. Okay, I'm intrigued. So could you me an example? How would I use decomposition like in real life? All right, so think of it like this. Imagine you have to build a staircase. Okay, already that's like 10 steps above my DIY level. Right, but instead of freaking out about the whole staircase, with decomposition, you break it down. How many steps do you need? What's the height of each step, the width? Suddenly, it's not this one massive problem. It's just a series of smaller, way more manageable tasks. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. So I can set a staircase mountain to more like brick by brick. I can get behind that. Precisely. And what's cool is this Malaysian textbook, they even give you a formula, like a mathematical formula, for calculating how many bricks you need based on the number of steps. Now that's what I call practical math. So decomposition, it's like a tool to help us manage those big overwhelming things that at first feel impossible. Okay, I'm with you, what's next? All right, so once we've broken our problem down into those smaller parts, like we were saying, the next step is to start looking for patterns, which brings us to, you guessed it, pattern recognition. Ooh, patterns. Yeah. So from spring rolls to staircases, is there like a common thread emerging here? There is. In that staircase example, think about it. Each step follows a pattern, right? Same width, but the height increases. Recognizing this helps us understand the structure and it lets us build efficiently. And if we go back to the Popia Basa, even though you can put whatever you want in there, the actual technique for rolling, that stays consistent. So like that repetition, that's also pattern recognition in action. Absolutely. It's all about finding those repeating sequences or those common elements that tie things together. And this is helpful because <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. Well, think about it. Once you've spotted a pattern, you've essentially unlocked a shortcut. You can start to predict outcomes, you work more efficiently, and even better, you can apply that knowledge to other similar problems in the future. So it's all about like working smarter, not harder, by seeing the repeating rhythms in what initially felt like chaos. Yeah, yeah I like the sound of that. Exactly. And the cool thing is, it's not just about recipes or staircases. Imagine you're learning a new language. You're not just memorizing random phrases, you're identifying grammatical structures, right? The patterns of the language. That can then be generalized to form new sentences. Whoa, okay, now you're really making me think about how often I'm already doing this without even realizing it. Hmm. But I have a feeling we're just scratching the surface here, right? Oh, there's more. There's more to this Malaysian computational thinking adventure. Oh yeah, much more to uncover. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to talk about how we simplify these patterns. Like how do we cut through the clutter and focus on what truly matters? And for that, we need to talk about abstraction. All right, so abstraction. It's one of those words, you know, right. sounds kind of vague, maybe even a little intimidating. Well, it doesn't have to be. Think of it this way. Have you ever like watched a sculptor work? 
Yeah, I can't say I have. So they start with a giant block of marble. Right. And they see this masterpiece hidden inside. But first, they've got to chip away all that excess stone. Hmm. Okay, I'm kind of with you. So are we saying abstraction is like simplifying but with a purpose? Exactly. It's about zeroing in on the essential elements of a problem and kind of like filtering out all those irrelevant details. Just like that sculptor, chipping away the excess stone to reveal the art underneath. So it's not just about getting rid of stuff, it's more about focusing like a laser on what truly matters. Right, remember our staircase example from earlier? Mm -hmm. So with abstraction, we're only concerned with the number of steps, the height, the width, those are the core elements, right? The color of the bricks, what they're made of, that stuff is interesting, sure, but it doesn't change the fundamental challenge, which is building the staircase itself. So we're kind of like creating a blueprint in a way, <laughs> like a simplified model of the problem. That's a great way to put it. And think about this. Imagine designing a website. Okay, shifting gears here from staircases to websites. I'm following. But at its core, what's the purpose of any website? It's to share information, maybe facilitate online shopping, right? That's your essential element. So you can abstract away concerns like specific font choices, color palettes, those come later, and just focus on the user experience, the journey you want them to take. So abstraction helps us prioritize, like, uh, what's the saying? See the forest for the trees. Exactly. And in a world that's just overflowing with information, honestly, that's a crucial skill to have, wouldn't you say? For sure. It's about applying this mental filter so you can focus on only the most relevant data points, much like a data scientist would do with, like, a massive data set. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It kind of reminds me of that Pupi Abasa example from the Malaysian textbook. Mm -hmm. We talked about how the rolling technique that's the consistent pattern. So is abstraction then about focusing on that technique itself, like not getting hung up on whether it's got tofu or shrimp inside? You've got it. It's that ability to separate that core process from the specific ingredients from that instance. And that is seriously powerful when you start thinking about it. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Generalization. We're taking this abstract thinking and like leveling it up, right? Generalization. Okay, yeah. Now we're talking. It's like the grand finale of computational thinking. It sounds way more complicated than it really is. Think back to those patterns we were talking about. Generalization is basically taking those patterns, those abstract models, and creating something that you can use over and over again, something adaptable. Okay, so instead of just solving one specific problem, it's more about finding solutions you can apply in tons of different situations. Kind of like a universal key that unlocks like a whole bunch of doors. That's a great way to put it. Remember that staircase formula from the Malaysian textbook? Mm -hmm. It's not limited to just that one staircase, right? The formula works because it's capturing the underlying principles of steps and risers, which means you can actually adapt it to any number of stairs. So instead of memorizing a million different formulas, we learn the core concept and just like adjust it as needed. You got it. You're not just learning facts, you're developing a mental framework, a way of thinking that equips you to tackle pretty much anything that comes your way. And honestly, the best part, you're probably already doing it, even without realizing. Well, seriously, I'm like a generalization ninja without even knowing it. Think about it. Like, learning to drive a car. You don't just memorize how to operate that specific car, you internalize the rules of the road, right? The principles of steering, braking, and that lets you drive practically any car. That, my friend, is generalization in action. Okay, wow, that's actually a really good example. Never thought of it like that. So we went from rolling spring rolls to building staircases to designing websites and now driving cars, and it's all connected by these four principles decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and generalization. I gotta say, I feel like you've unlocked some kind of secret code for thinking better. And the really cool thing is that these principles, they aren't just for tech people or mathematicians. This is for everyone, seriously. It doesn't matter if you're a student, an artist, an entrepreneur, if you're just trying to navigate you know, this crazy thing we call life, computational thinking can be a seriously powerful tool. This deep dive has been amazing. I feel like I'm walking away, not just understanding these concepts better, but with a whole new way of looking at problems, you know? That's awesome. And hey, remember, the next time you come up against a problem, any problem, big or small, don't freak out. Just take a deep breath, break it down, see if you can spot any patterns, simplify, and hey, you can even try to apply something you've already learned. You might just surprise yourself with how much easier things become when you approach them with a little computational thinking. Love it. So to all you listeners out there, we started with a Malaysian textbook and ended up on a journey through like the very heart of how we think and how we solve problems. 
And until next time, keep those brains buzzing. We'll catch you on our next deep dive.